This is episode 103 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion Morales, and today I'm joined by William Haywood. Oh, another uh, top table um, that I could not finish. By Justin Brown. Hello. Apparently I'm a guest this week. And new System Open champion, Tyler Tippett. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about, of course, the Adepticon system open that here that happened here in the Chicagoland area. Uh, but before we get into that, I do need to, to give a big shout out to our patrons, our new patrons. Well, of course, all patrons, but a uh, new shout out to, uh, here we go, first names. We got Skeffington, Elliot, uh, Washibana. I have a feeling that's not your actual name, but it's fine. It's fine. You can use whatever name you want. Uh, Chris Aslan, Brendan, Jason, Nicholas, Joseph, Jeff, Tristan, Benny, Caleb, Stefan, Charles, Robert, Stephen, Julian, Bobby, and Kevin. Thank you so much for your support, guys. I really appreciate it. If you ever need anything, always feel free to reach out to Gold Squadron. I got your back. All right, we're going to jump right into it. This last weekend, we had the Adepticon system open here in Chicago and... Um, Let's just start by seeing how you. I, I obviously went undefeated, right? Like that's that's just the easiest part. We can move on from there. <laughs> I didn't play. I was casting the whole time. Um, William, we'll go ahead and start with you. How'd you do? Uh, I took uh, so in the open, flew Alyssa, never flown before. Three uh, Z X B U. Uh, lost my second and third game, so I didn't really. Uh, that that means that I wouldn't make the cut. So I basically just try to have fun the rest of the day. Um, though I did like that list. It, is, it was right up my alleyway. It's uh, the kind of ships I like. So uh, I had a lot of fun flying it, even though it did not perform as well as I'd hoped. Um, did pretty good in the qualifier, though, uh, on Saturday. I uh, got uh, five wins right in a row, uh, but couldn't, couldn't finish the sixth one to get the invite. You were right so, there. You were on the verge of greatness. I know. I'm getting I'm, this whole month. I've just gotten so close. Uh, gotten to the finals in like three tournaments. Well, the trial wasn't a final, but right. close enough. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought I did pretty good for what I think is uh, two really bad lists. <laughs> <laughs> And what about you, Justin? Um, I took the fun list called Quad Phantoms. I think there might be somebody else on here that knows something about it. I did take the, the crack shot variant and started off one and one, but ended up making the, the cut. Um, so it's actually my third Adepticon cut in a row, which I'm, I have to say I'm pretty proud of. And then I managed to make the top 16 and lost a super close game to Jake Abrams, who ended up making the top four. And I think overall, I have to say, uh, I'm sad to lose that game, but also happy for Jake that he has an opportunity to go to Worlds when I really wouldn't have had an opportunity to go just because of, uh, I'll say, personal, uh, family situations. So I'm yeah. um, definitely happy with my finish. Um, from there, I went over and joined the, the qualifier, got a win, and just kind of noped out of it, just wanted to hang out. Um, Ended up getting paired up with Nate Moore and decided to concede to him since he was trying to go to Worlds. And again, I I know I can't. So right. I decided to go hang out and watch the mixed wing instead of wrecking my brain even more <laughs> and playing. But overall, I had a good run and had a ton of fun. And Quad Phantoms is broken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tyler, how'd you do? Uh, I went 10 and 1. So finished finished out the, the weekend, went in the whole thing. Uh, my only loss was to a quad fan of mirror to Tyler Shaw from Indianapolis. And uh, I made a mistake and he punished me for it. And then it was just like, not only did I lose the mirror, but I lost it to a Tyler. So he's the better Tyler for the weekend. I just happened to win the whole thing. <laughs> he can claim he's the only person who beat you, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, that he was not the only person to come close. Like I had a large number of extremely tight games, including one that's... I won on legitimately last turn of game at time where I had to natty two evades to not give up half points and then natty three hits to kill evader on one hit. 
So had some luck, had some good matchups, flew pretty well. Well, I mean, we were talking about that last week, right? We 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 discussed, you know, in order to win a system open, right? You gotta ha- you gotta be prepared, right? You gotta fly well, but there there is that just like what you just said, you gotta have good matchups, and uh, sometimes you just need a little luck. <laughs> yeah, hundred uh, percent. I like Will. Also, took a list I had never flown before, so I didn't have any reps with Quad Phantom. But that's a little disingenuous because I flew Triple Phantom for like hundreds of games back in Wave Four through Seven. Right. So just giving me an extra cloaky boy, not that different. Here, it's a bonus one, a bonus right? phantom. <laughs> so, so it was weird because I kept losing one, which generally happens like on the on the joust or in the engage, and then I was like, oh, it's back to triple, fine, no big deal. Right, you know how to play that game from there. No yeah. panic. Yep. So let's go into maybe talking about for each of you, what were some of maybe give give me your biggest highlight, that moment in a game where you feel like you did something. You know, you, you access that extra level of X-Wing skill. I'll give you guys a second to think about it. Somebody jump in whenever you, you maybe you, you got it. Uh, I got uh, an easy one. Go for it. And uh, it was playing the, it was when I was playing the turn down for Watt. And uh, basically, um, I, I was facing uh, uh, Jared uh, Crumbly. And he's okay. got... Uh, Soon tier Vader Vermeil. And at a certain point, like round two of the like in first engagement, uh, I just like did the Rain Man thing and was like, all right, these are all your maneuvers. I'm gonna block every single one. Uh, so Vader cannot go anywhere. And Jared <laughs> Jared's recognized that and just did not know what to do. Um, and that was <laughs> Uh, that's that's probably uh, the most satisfying thing with those uh, vulture swarms when you could just converge on somebody and give them literally no option uh, for a maneuver. That's awesome, Justin Tyler. Yeah, I would have to say I had something similar. It's actually in the the last round of Swiss. I was matched up against a really cool. It was Rex there with Juke, Whisper with Juke, and Americ Steel with. Um, composure and afterburners, which is a really cool combo. But anyway, I had a similar situation where at the end of the game, I basically had three phantoms left against Rexler, and I could not do any damage. I was just throwing all the dice at him, and he was nattying out of everything until I finally <laughs> engineered a situation where I blocked basically every single one of his maneuvers, got two range one shots on him, and got him to half, and kind of bri- breathed a, a huge sigh of relief as that made the game that much easier as... I could basically lose two phantoms and still win. He made you work for it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I mean, that's I know that that I can get a little bit on edge when you feel like you have a game in hand. You're like, I just gotta kill this last ship, no big deal. And you're like, I've been shooting at it for five turns. Why won't it die? Just die, please. Or why wouldn't it even take one damage? Yeah. <laughs> five, five, five turns, Dion. How about 65-ish minutes? <laughs> what What are you referring to? <laughs> Nathan's two-hole, Han. Uh, I think I put him on two-hole at like the 35-minute mark, and I killed him at the hour 45 mark, yep. something like that. Yeah, jeez. Uh, I think my... My favorite play of the weekends is recorded on your stream. It's my top eight game against uh, um, Adam Kempers. Mm-hmm. Uh, great game. That was, by the way, that was yeah. that was an awesome one. It was a very good game, but it was also one of those things where I knew what he was going to do. I knew he was going to stay on his board edge and just pop lay at a 4K and go back down his board edge. And I kind of like deked twice like I was going to come in, but then used, used my decloaks to like create space again. And I called the, the K turn turn correctly Mm -hmm. and on that turn i broke my phantoms into two pairs and got two of them with like a decloak left three blank into the back of his entire like ranks and pretty much from that point i knew the game was over like i have two phantoms behind his behind his list if he k turns again they're not gonna have uh tokens to stop my juke right and i I basically took an x-wing for free and at which point i was just like okay now it's just kind of clean up point but uh even after the game, he just kind of looked up and he went, so you split them up. And I was like, yes. And he was like, no one's ever done that before. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, that one felt pretty good. 
Yeah, I mean, when I was watching your game, uh, that was one thing we were commentating about. And you guys, anybody out there can actually watch the final once we get it posted. We post about two of the games a day. Um, just that's just because of, you know, internet bandwidth stuff. It takes about takes about that much time to get everything edited and stuff. But about two games a day, that one will probably be up this weekend. I would highly suggest watching both of Tyler's games because you took you took this quad phantom list and showed two different ways to create approaches with it. Um, and the seeing the game where you didn't start them um, in a box. Oh, sorry. Maybe I'm thinking about Tyler. Tyler, one game, the other Tyler. There was three games <laughs> <laughs> with a Tyler playing quad phantoms. But anyway, you were able to break them apart in a formation. And I remember in Nathan's game, you actually kind of come back into like a pseudo formation. It was just really interesting to watch you do that. Yeah, it I mean, it took forever, uh, but it was like one of those I finally – that's one of those – like the, that whole game, in my head, I was behind the whole game just because that's the way it feels like you're playing. Like I took Nora and most of Han's shields for one phantom, and then I took Han to two health for damage on a phantom, but I still had two clean phantoms, right? And I think I'd even taken the shields off Jake at one point, and maybe, maybe, maybe I was like shieldless on one. In my head, I'm like massively down, right? Because I can't hit this Han. I can't right. hit this Han. And I was blocking him and trying to get shots, but it would be effectively I'd get one shot, right? Or I'd get mm -hmm. a bad shot and just wasn't connecting. So finally I had to take that like composure moment of just take a breath, step back, get my ships together, put them all in the same corner, right? To where I can, you know, just move them up. And I don't know if you could hear it on the table audio when I finally do that in the like the upper left corner from my position mm -hmm. um, over by Nathan's, right? I decloak and I know I have a four forward dialed in right and I walk over there to do it and like my I'm not square with the table edge I'm pointed towards the table edge right and I'm like oh my and it's my full health phantom I'm like oh my god I just flew my phantom off the board like I just threw this game away like 90 minutes into it and like I reveal the dial and I was like I can't believe I just did this and Nathan just looks at me he's like what that, that fits easily no <laughs> right I was like oh okay it does yeah all right we're fine but I was like I was just waiting for that like one mistake to happen or that yep. one die roll to just like oh, okay nope I'm done now let's lose again yeah man it uh I didn't catch up I didn't pick up on that moment I couldn't hear you we could hear quite a bit of what you were saying but we didn't yeah. see we didn't I didn't notice the panic yeah no I was <laughs> yes. I say I think my two favorite moments of that game were that and then uh, so my girlfriend Trisha who lives in the Chicago suburbs for like one more day before moving to Michigan uh, got to come and see the final yeah and she's played one game where we played an intro game and she beat me and she was just like all right I'm going out on top I'm a 100% win rate I don't need to play anymore <laughs> uh, and so she was there watching and uh, one of her coworkers from O'Hare actually plays as well. And okay. he was there talking to her about, you know, like what was going on strategy wise. And it was about like, you know, 95 minutes in, I took a, a bold decloak to try to block Jake and I end up on a rock. Yep. I remember like, I, just the corners on the rock. And it was like, it was a, one of those like calculated risks. Cause I couldn't get punished if I land on the rock. Right. Mm -hmm. I was just blocking Jake and I can hear from the crowd her go, Oh, I think you just hit a rock. That's bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> just like, thanks, honey. Yes, yeah, that's bad. Yep. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> yeah. So I told her she has to come to all my events now because she's my good luck charm. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> well, yeah, man, I know um, I was talking to you about it at Adepticon, but you have come close in a lot of events, and I'm sure, it, fe yeah. it, I'm sure it feels really good to finally get that W. Uh, yeah, hundred percent, and that's I think that's part of the 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 panic on the decloak like four straight is I've come close in a lot of events and then I've just made a mistake. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I play a perfect nine rounds or ten rounds or something like that, and then I get into a game and know how to win it. Like the top sixteen at, at Worlds, uh, I just made a mistake on decloaking and put where I put Whisper and. Um, Mashari just punished the crap out of me for it as he should because he's a really good player. But I was just like, why, why did I do that? I would never do this in a normal game. Why did I just decide to do this now? So I was trying not to do that the mm -hmm. entire time. So. And then I didn't. And then eventually then, and died. <laughs> but I died. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> for, as, for as degenerate as everyone says Quad Phantom is, that Han, let me tell you. That Han's pretty good. And I have a feeling now that it's out there, it's going to get played more. Go ahead, Will. Uh, I wasn't able to watch all 
<laughs> all of that game because it went pretty long. Um, yeah. <laughs> how many times was he doing the uh, the whole uh, inertial dampener as Kanan? Was it sporadically? Did he do it multiple times in a row? Uh, no, I never let him do it multiple times in a row. I think he probably did it three times over the course of the game. Right, like so. Yeah, it was three. It was, it was three or four. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was that combination of like. So I was talking to Kevin ID afterwards, and I was like, "Man, I just couldn't kill that Han." And he's like, "Yeah, well, but you know, Nathan did a good job of like always keeping him you know, at range three or giving you bad shots." So I was like, "He gets that decision after I move." Yeah. <laughs> like, he just looks at the board and goes, "Either I'm gonna stay here because you misplayed, or I'm gonna three bank and then boost, and you're and you're still taking a bad shot." Yep. <sighs> So. Yeah, so for those of for those of you who don't know uh, what he's referring to, um, Nathan brought a Han Solo that had inertial dampeners, had R two D two crew, which allows you to gain a shield. You have to roll a die on a hit. You end up flipping one of your damage cards, but with Han's ability, you can re roll it. So most of the time, even though statistically, I think he hit it twice. He hit it twice, right? right? Yeah, that's like, crazy. That like, does not happen. That's a it's a big outlier. Most of the time, you you don't end up hitting that. But uh, anyway, so you get the shield and initial dampeners requires you to take a damage in order to stop. So essentially, you can stop as many times as you can regen. Um, that's the idea. So after everything's moved at initiative six, he can either choose to stop and basically spend that shield, get it back at the end of the turn with R2-D2 or execute his maneuver. It's really good. <laughs> well, so but the other the other side of it is normally it gives you a stress token, right? But with Kanan, it's a white stop that gives you stress, so you, yep. you then can dump the stress token. So there's no drawback whatsoever. What was his oh. normal action when he cleared that stress? Then, uh, it, it depended on position. It was he normally would focus for like damage output, mm -hmm. but I don't think he target locked ever in the game. I mean, you're, you're Han. You don't really need to. Yeah, well, I mean, but it's just you know, like... It'd be nice to have, sure. Right, exactly. Um, so it was effectively either fixing a crit, focusing, or boosting pretty much every time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, like, even though I uh, he hit twice with R2-D2 to flip up two crits, the first one was a... Um, damage sensor ray that just didn't matter because he's pretty action agnostic anyway right i and i was blocking him so he couldn't flip it down but he's still got a force point he's still got han rerolls um he can han reroll my juke which is super frustrating yep uh and then the second one was a weapons failure that once again like he could spend the action and still have han reroll stop force like, and on the turn, he flips the weapons failure. He just killed one of my phantoms. Like, I lined up the kill shot, and I thought I was done on that turn when I had two of them that had good shots, and he killed the lead guy with effective, like, with just the Han mods. And then the back guy rolled one hit, no, like, two blanks, and couldn't put any damage through. But then I got two shots on him and got the kill. And then it was Jake versus the world. Jake had to kill like a full health phantom, uh, one hit point phantom with like five minutes left, I think. Something like that. So I wasn't super worried at that point. I was just kind of waiting for it. Yep. And and then you were able to take it home. And one of the yeah. most entertaining things for me was um, was watching your dad and Kevin's dad <laughs> sitting next to each other watching the game. That was so good. Yep. Like, they were actually, um, your dad, Mark, uh, if you ever heard him, sometimes he's on the OCX radio podcast, and um, <laughs> before the match started, he goes, Dion, you should let me and Kevin commentate. Let me and Kevin commentate. It'll be gold. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, man, if, if I had, like, an extra recorder with me, I probably would have handed them mics and just, I would have loved to have that audio. Right. Just have them have them talking. That would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And I was – so one of the things that I, I really enjoy – so I, I enjoy playing Nathan every time I get to play him, right? Because it's like we're two good players. We're, we've been friends forever. Like I played him the, – the first time I played him, he was 13 at the very first Milwaukee Regional. Mm -hmm. Like we played in the first round. Um, and I want to say we're like – I'm like four and five against him all time in tournament play, something like that. Like we're, we're pretty close to 500. Um, 
but it's just a fun game where we sit down and we just play the game. And like, even the judges after the game just came over and thanked us because they were like, Hey, we didn't have to do anything. We're like, we know, like, I don't, we don't need you to check an arc. We don't need you to like, you know, put a template down. We'll get, we'll take care of it. We'll be, we'll just be able to play. And like, even I think it was about the 30 minute mark. Nathan noticed he was down on points and was like, Oh, I'm going to need more rounds. Hey, can we pick up pace of play? Sure. I will say that I hit both of my rocks after I decided to, to play quicker. Yep. <laughs> so, but so that that's just always a uh, it's a much uh, more fun and engaging game when you've got that. I don't know. It's you can be more relaxed with the person you're playing, if you oh. will. Not oh, that yeah. you're playing sloppy or anything like that, but you just yeah. It takes it takes a level of the tension out for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I remember at Coruscant we were playing on stream, and it was like the four strikers were Supernatural Luke, right? Mm -hmm. And at one point he's trying to figure out what to do with Supernatural, and I just asked him what is on what's on his dial, like because it's Luke's getting ready to move, and I'm like, oh, I would probably like one boost that way you can go here and then barrel roll with your action. And someone was walking by, like, why are you helping him? I'm like, because <laughs> he's my friend. Like, what? Right. <laughs> why, why wouldn't I do that? So. I wouldn't want to win because he just makes a blatant mistake because he didn't think of something, right? Like right. And that's pretty much any of my games. Exactly, exactly. That's that's the best kind of attitude uh, when you yeah. uh, when you have that kind of uh, trust with your opponent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's uh, it's the best kind of X wing. Yeah. Awesome. So now I want to get into talking about the lists that were in the top cut. We had 27 players make the cut at the Adepticon system open. I'm going to give you guys some overall stats. I'm going to ask you guys some questions, see how it feels, and then we'll find out what is true out of this. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, we had all five of the legal factions at the time were represented in the cut uh the most represented faction was the empire with 10 lists followed by the rebels with eight the resistance with four the first order with three and scum with two now here's my question for you guys how many of the 10 empire lists had a phantom in it Oh, that's such a crap question. Because <laughs> at least one of them was Whisper. That doesn't count. <laughs> All right. How many of the mo how many? I, I tried to get you. you Tyler yeah. didn't. Tyler didn't let me. <laughs> Fine. How many of the ten lists had multiple phantoms in it? Uh, six or seven. What's your guess, I Justin? Think, I, th I think there was four quad and two other. Um, I'll say seven. Will, <laughs> I, I I know. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're looking at the list, you cheater! Stop looking at our notes. How dare you be a good podcaster? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there were eight. Eight of them Was were eight, okay. phantom spam of some kind. Seven of them were Sigma Squadron Ace with Jukes. Uh, some had crack shot. Some didn't. Most of them did. Um, one of them was Palp Aces. Yeah, Matt Herb. Matt Let's Herb, go. which we'll get to that in a little bit. And then Aren't there was there a, actually a couple of Vader and Triple. Yeah, uh, Vader and Three. Ones? That was and there was one. It was one. There was two. There I was, thought there was two. Uh, maybe maybe, was maybe I'm two. maybe I'm bad at Hassan. Yeah, and Hassan did. Oh, I'm bad at reading then. <laughs> then yes. Uh, and then there was one mixed Empire. What I would call mixed Empire. There was like a couple Tie Fighters and some weird weirdness in there. Yeah, then we get then, right. then we get to rebel. We can. There's probably no surprise that every single one of the eight rebel lists had what card in it? Leia crew. Leia. Yep. <laughs> Leia crew. All eight of them. Um, and I want I want to jump to a an overall statistic here, just because I it just kind of blew my mind. Okay. So, how many total Leia crews do you think out of the two hundred and oh man, we had sixty five? Do you think there were in the field? Well, how many rebels were there? I didn't get a chance to count all of okay. that, but let me tell you that I most was, of them had. I was, <laughs> I was, I was going to say ninety percent of rebel lists outside yeah. of Barnacle, who apparently just doesn't like the U wing. Uh, everyone else, yeah. I mean, like sixty Leia's. There's fifty three. 
53. Okay. Yeah. From the ones that we we had documented, because not everything sure. is documented, but yeah. that's still a ton, a ton you know, of Leia crew. But, but hold on, hold on. Phantoms are under cost, guys. <laughs> both hashtag both. I think is sure. the is the answer is the answer. Okay. Is the answer I'll there. buy that. I'll buy that. <laughs> Uh, if Rebel ships weren't so bad, maybe Leia would need to be a little bit more expensive. Well, so I, I've talked about this with some some buddies and whatnot, and I think the problem is that Leia at two points was fine with the old costs of the Rebel ships, but the Rebel ships also went down. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like these these brawler Leia lists got 15 points in the price update instead of, you know, just like five, right? So it's when you combine you, when you combine those two aspects, that's when they kind of get out of control. That's true. Uh, there's a couple of surprising rebel lists when we get to them that I really want to break down. Yeah. Then when we get to the resistance, uh, there was only four lists here. One of them was five A wings that was flown by Ryan Staniszewski. We had two that were. Poe plus either three A-Wings or two A-Wings with Bastion, and then also a Han, Resistance Han, what? Yeah. With Poe. And Poe, yep. Super weird. <laughs> but he uh, he used it well. Um, let's, we'll just keep going down the list here. Uh, FOs, all of them were Kylo plus friends. Now, the friends that you brought was different, but all of them were Kylo. Were they all Supernatural Kylo? No. There were some hate Kylos. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I flew at a uh, crate cup. It's real good. Mm hmm. That's what and... I flew for that one round of qualifier I did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then we get to Scum, which had two lists, and they were two completely different lists, which um, one was a Han Boba, and the other one we'll break down because I think it's really cool. So it's old para, right? Yeah, old, yeah, old nice. para, just, just bring, bringing something weird and, and making yeah. the cut with it. Shocking. <laughs> I have to give a shout-out to old para because he was in a, a hangar bay that I did on Friday and his or Thursday, and his dice were utter garbage. Like I, I watched a couple of the games and he couldn't roll anything and apparently he made up for it on the Friday in the in the actual open. There you so go. Props to him. Yeah, absolutely love it. So um, let's. I gave you the overall numbers. Total uh, quad phantom list. There were eighteen of them documented um, out of the two hundred X. So not as many as you might think, but we know that quite a few of them were high performing, which is what leads people to think that, oh, they're, they're everywhere. Well, they're not, not necessarily everywhere, but they are performing well for players who are playing them. Tyler, I don't know about you, but when I was looking like during the Swiss, mm -hmm. like I would look to the left and the right of me and see quad phantoms. Yeah. So well, I, I felt like there were more than, um, I think you said, just said 16 or 18. There Sorry, was only 18. It, but... But it was weird, too, because whenever I was watching and looking around, I didn't see any quad phantoms facing quad phantoms. It was just like they were all over the place. But they oh, never man, faced each other. I had uh, that's not true at all. <laughs> I, had, me. I, had, I had three mirror matches. My second mirror match, I was his third mirror match of the day at like round five. Uh, we, we definitely weeded each other out. Uh, you definitely what, took the bullet for me. <laughs> uh, what's I mean, what's so what's funny is when Tyler and I sat down in round two, I think it was, to play the mirror, he was like, do you just want to final salvo this and go get food? I was like, you know what? I don't know what the right call is on uh, initiative <laughs> or not here. Like, I think I do, but I'm not 100% and I haven't played this fight before. So let's play it out. And that way we can get some idea for future. And then I kind of dream, dream crushed my other two quad phantom games just from that one kind of practice. Uh, while, while we're speaking of the, the matchups, so Tyler, you brought the crack shot uh, yeah, and Justin, you didn't. Oh, I did bring it. I had yeah. crack shot. I only used it once, honestly, but I brought it. Oh, uh, I used it a bunch. So when you guys were facing lists that didn't have the crack shot, how did that initiative play out? I, I didn't see one. All, all of the lists I played against had crack shot, and I also won the roll off each time. Okay, so when you won the roll off, what was what that decision process like? Um, so the first time I played it, I didn't know which way I wanted to go, and so I took initiative and 
I have like hundreds of games of playing Whisper that has initiative, like against a Han and, and that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of know how to how to play Phantoms with initiative. And the second two games, I also took initiative and was able to abuse that pretty pretty heavily because you get your juke shots off, right? Like I for sure get juke. You don't necessarily get juke, and that's pretty powerful. So that's more than more than the the decloaking and the positioning. It's really just who gets their juke. Uh, well, no. So the decloaking is also there because I can bully in a uh, uh, in formation. Right, so like I can look at the board and go like I have space to decloak all four of my guys up and then two turn right. Mm -hmm. Versus my opponent has to go. Well, he could decloak to any of these three locations. What's a move that I can put into where I might get shots or I at least have a, a vector to escape? You know what I mean? Like if mm -hmm. I have to bail decloak. So. And going first, you're guaranteed to fit your decloaks and. Fix yeah, exactly. Moves. That's what I'm saying. Is like I I know for sure that I get my moves in basically. Interesting. So, so if you took the crack shot out, you'd actually be doing it to take initiative then? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Race to the bottom. But yeah, basically, basically the only <laughs> reason you would remove it is for that uh, the mirror match. And sure. every other match, yep. crack is definitely worth it. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it heavily was, was... So it was either I could get the crack shot off and cause damage, or I would offer the crack shot phantom up so they're killing the the cheaper phantom of the four yeah that's definitely what i was doing my my crack phantom was always in front and always the one that if i i got a bad engagement they were only shooting at it so i'm like well, well whatever you can shoot at that and then next turn i'm just going to use it as a blocker yep so now justin and tyler I know that people might not want me to ask this question, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm all about making sure that people learn. Now, if you had advice for somebody wanting to pick up the list and say, I want to I want to learn how to be good at quad phantoms, you can give them a, a tidbit, something that they should either be practicing, pay attention to, what, what might that be? So, uh, well, it'll be over on Echo Base. Uh, cause it was my, uh, my quad phantom versus three phantoms plus uh, countdown, which is basically quad phantom. Uh, you'll see the way I, I decloak and position repeatedly is you want to make sure that your following turn, you have good decloak and maneuver options to keep time on target. So just practicing, throwing out some asteroids and moving the four of them in formation, and kind of keeping that okay here's the one here's the decloak left with the bun bank this is where i end up now can i decloak left again and one hard i'm not going to hit rocks i'm not going to hit debris that kind of stuff and in knowing those positional plays like that that uh that definitely is a big part of it and that's effectively what i was saying before is i have a lot of games with triple phantom so this isn't really that different i think it's my thought is to make sure that you always have multiple options don't put yourself in a position where you only have one decloak option which is very predictable let yourself have multiple decloak options yeah. either straight or to both sides or mm -hmm. or whatnot if you get pinned down into only having one decloak then you're you're very predictable and you'll you'll definitely get lit up which is not a good thing yep so would you guys say that you know we we know that the phantom is good right it 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 uh it's a uh, if you looked at the power curve, it's currently people would say that it is above the power curve. Now, would you say that really the power of the Phantom really obviously has a, the juke available to it, but it, is it really the the movement that it is capable of on the board when you can look at a ship and now you have to try to take its maneuver dial and multiply that by three different possibilities? Do you think it's is is it the the decloaking mechanic that really sends it over the edge is it the stygium particle array like which part of it if it lost um you know a certain piece of its if its chassis would it then make it not competitive anymore what do you think uh, i mean there's a lot of things you could take out to really knock it down the power level but i think the reason that phantoms in general this includes whisper this includes quad phantom that kind of stuff is the uh the time on target that it can keep up it's much like a resistance a wing like i can get shots almost every turn with it because i can move in a manner that no other ship in the game can really do right like mm -hmm. the candy cane what like decloak left one tart right things like that um the fact that it effectively has a 7k turn 
if it wants to abuse that. Like I can, I can get to places with a phantom that no one else can. And the battlefield isn't the same for me as it is for everybody else. Right. right. I have no problem just driving up to a rock and, and parking right in front of it and firing at you to get cover because I know next turn, you now have to guess, am I going left or right? Mm-hmm. But I, I get, I have perfect information when I get to make that decision. Right. So I think that's the most abusable fact. I also think that uh, Quad Phantoms is one of those lists that, like, yeah, they're, they're Phantoms in general are a little bit above the power curve, but it's that, uh, like, player abusability that, like, when you take a good player and you put the ship that can go pretty much anywhere, like, you can leverage, that lets you leverage player skill that little bit extra. Yeah, I definitely agree that it it's a list that needs a good player. If, if you're not as good of a player, then I mean, yeah, you can do well, but it's it's that ceiling that is raised up even higher when you have a good player that knows what all it can do. It, it knows you can deloc one direction, like do a three-turn barrel roll and just basically park yourself sideways in front of the list and get a shot at one of the ships. There's no other list that can really do that where you're going to be facing one direction and then basically be, what, a four forward in front of it or a five forward in front of it facing the other way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. Now, let's. I'm going to continue down the rabbit hole. Would you guys have taken the quad phantoms if Juke just wasn't an option on them for whatever reason, whether it prices it out or maybe they just. I don't know, Juke, not Phantoms or some stupid like that. But if Juke wasn't an option, would you have flown it? I, I don't think so because uh, – so Juke is – well, so multiple Jukes in a list gets is where it gets degenerate, right? It's not the fact that there's one Juke or even two Jukes. Two Jukes is good, but it's not – like horrible it's when you have three jukes and previously four jukes that you have effectively crack shot infinitely right so i can pour a lot of fire in there and that pushes consistency for the list right Mm -hmm. it lets you stop that y wing that you're shooting at that you need to do five damage then you do two damage two damage two damage with your phantoms with your three phantoms but they go evade 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 and so you don't kill it right now i can take that position go okay i'm gonna get two hits two hits two hits he can maybe get one evade but the other two just don't count and so now I know I can kill him for sure. And I, uh, you have that, um, that like that certainty level, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or that, uh, that amount of risk that you can take is just a lot higher knowing that you have that, that power. And you also have a, like a puncher's chance against like triple ace, right? Like if you're fighting three empire aces, like having two or three juke shots at a Sunter fell means, Hey, I probably hit that guy. If there's not juke involved there, I still probably don't. Or like a whisper or something like that. That's a really dodgy ace. So I, I don't think you would see Quad Phantom without Juke. I'm not sure if there's a different way you could go with it. I mean, if you don't put Juke on the four Phantoms, you can put Sloan. So, like, now it starts getting different. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> so, well, you could have. But... Well, oh, I guess that's true, yeah. So I don't know if there's a, if there's a gunner option for them. That's when, when can we get something similar to 7th Gunner for Empire? Man, Phantoms and Strikers would just love a gunner that was worth anything. Soon, TM. Yeah, right. <laughs> Finger, fingers crossed. Let's go. Okay, so overall, yeah. I would I would kind of agree with what Tyler said, but kind of where my head's at is if the juke wasn't available, I, I probably wouldn't have been taking four. I probably would have been looking at three invader because Vader adds that punch that uh, you lose from juke. Yeah, and that's true. The, phant- the three phantoms, they still have the maneuver shen- shenanigans, and then they're even better blockers because they're a PS lower. So I actually got more practice with that than I did the quad phantoms, and uh, I really didn't enjoy the three, but just my head kind of went to four was better because Juke is so good. William, you were going to say something? Yeah, uh, we're we're about we're gonna break down some uncommon lists here in just uh, just a bit. Uh, some of them I th- believe were brought specifically to counter uh, the quad phantoms. Uh, but in your guys' opinion, what is the quad phantom hard counter? I guess my opinion is because it was my two losses, but I didn't like seeing selfless rebels just being able to distribute that damage across multiple different ships. Um, That was a a real killer for me where shooting at Biggs and he survives three extra rounds because I I unfortunately roll a crit and selfless pulls it off. So I think 
to me, I don't know if it's a hard counter, but that's what I lost doing. That's, that's a hard, that's, that's a harder fight for sure. Um, anything that you can't, I'm trying to think, I mean, the, the mirror, I guess. <laughs> How that uh, does it count? <laughs> uh, right. Um, I think part of the reason that quad phantom is also good is that there isn't a hard counter. As far as I can tell, there's nothing that I sat across from that I went, oh man, I can't beat this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, sure, there were fights where I was like, oh, this is this is a tougher fight, or I've got to play perfect for the first couple of rounds. But after that, then I felt okay. But I don't know. That's that All was right. my feeling. Well, will go. Like, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Tyler. Finish. My bad. No, that's just that's I, I didn't feel like I had anything that I, that was a reasonable expectation to see being played that I couldn't beat. So, Will, go ahead and uh, transition to the uh, the list. You know, go continue on that train of thought. All right. Uh, there's actually I want to start with uh, old Paris because um, I think it's uh, by far. Um, the most unusual, something that I don't think anybody was looking at. Um, and it was uh, Ketsu Onyo in the Shadowcaster with Fearless, Maul, and Shadowcaster title. Uh, then he also has Old Turok, the Fang, with Predator, and Talonbrain, Cobra, with Predator. And... When I uh, when I saw this, they're all they're all initiative fives. Mm-hmm. Two of them have predator, uh, and Ketsu uh, at the start of combat can shadow caster somebody as well. The uh, which gives him a tractor beam. Or sorry, uh, he just uses his own ability or her yeah. own ability yep. uh, to uh, tractor beam somebody. And when I saw this, I was like, "This is uh, he he set up a quad phantom hard counter." Uh, those predators, uh, I assume, uh, can just shoot down. Uh, both of you guys said, you know, you're running the the four block uh, of phantoms, and it should be easy to just point your arcs towards them and get predator. But the fact that you could tractor beam one and then light it up with uh, Talonbane Cobra with five dice, and you could also strip that one, focus and evade with old Tarok, I feel like this list would just run over two phantoms in the first two rounds of combat. Well, in his yeah, stream, I feel like it could. Could I mean, he, yes. he definitely has to get that opening engagement right? If he misses with Ketsu, then he's going to be in for a bad time. In yeah. his stream match, he actually did play against Tyler Shaw, who was fl- who was flying quad phantoms. So you actually get to see him play against Oof. that matchup, and it comes down to the wire. It was an awesome game. Um, well, that was one, that the top thirty-two or the this was round five. So this oh, one God. will be live tomorrow. That that tomorrow being Wednesday, it'll be live. So keep your eye out for that one. It was awesome. It was a really good game. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, continue, Will. All right, let's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna bounce this one over to Tyler because uh, I think he's uh, got the most experience with it. Uh, Nathan Ides, uh, yeah. Han Solo, Nor Wexley, and Jake Farrell. He's got Crack Shot. Uh, we talked about the 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 combo of Kane and Jarrus R two D two Ernest and Ernest and Han Solo. You put Trick Shot on your large base. Uh, everybody knows that. Um, and if you got an open crew, you put Leia. And if you, apparently he had two points left over for a couple crack shots. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, give, what is your... Uh, I see. I saw him playing this down in uh, Craig Cup, getting a couple games in with it. What, yep. Tyler, what is your impression of this? Is this uh, a list that we're going to see replicated? Uh, I mean, we very well could. I don't know if it'll be exactly this. Um the list basically boils down to I don't think you can kill Han with a normal style list in 70 minutes. So you kind of need to like kill Nora, which is not the, the easiest thing to do, right? Like got a lot of hit points plus Nora's passive ability is really good. Um, but like Jake's 37 points. So like you see it in the, his, uh, the gold squadron stream game against uh, Zach Bart, where Zach just like one shots Jake on the opening exchange. And it just doesn't matter. 
Yep. Like he ends up not being able to keep guns on Han because he can stop or he can move and boost that kind of a thing. And I, maybe he kills Nora. I'm not really sure, but then just Han just kills everything. Right. Like it's like he, he was nowhere close to ever killing Han. And that was my big takeaway from my game too, was I don't know how outside of just all inning Han. And even then I don't think I can. And if I just ignore Nora and Jake, they're going to put damage through, right? Like they have Mm -hmm. like Jake's passive giving Nora a focus so she can focus target lock every turn. Jake boosting in to to cause damage, that kind of stuff um, is, you know, strong damage output out of ships that are not very expensive. And then this 105 point on is just going around trucking things with hyper defense. So it's really, really good. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know how I would fight it in a, uh, uh, like a normal 70 minute match short of just, I mean, I guess if you took the first 60 minutes of my match and then knowing that I only had 10 minutes left that I had to deal with, I just bail and just sit in a corner Right is what I would end up doing. But I guess yeah. my question is, is how many folks can actually do as well with it as Nathan can? How many folks will, yeah, Jake's only what, 38 points. How many folks can actually fly him as well as Nathan? I'm guessing no. that number is pretty small. That's very true. But the thing that, like, the, the big thing there is that Han can do 100 points worth of damage in a full game. So it doesn't matter if you're Jake and Nora gets a lot of damage in. Like, they're just, you have to fight those ships to kill them because you can't kill Han. Right. Like that's the big discrepancy there. Um, Agreed. If you fly him correctly. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You, I mean, you, you can't do crazy things like flying Jake, Jake off by himself, like, and then not being able to punish if everyone turns on Jake, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's an interesting space that Han alone. I don't know if necessarily Jake and Nora with uh, Leia is the right answer for wingman there could be that maybe there's something else that fits better works better but it's definitely uh really strong so uh my my only question about that is is jake good so so jake's a medical because he's the same pilot skill as the quad phantoms and he gives out an extra focus token every turn right because right, it's not mm-hmm. just to so himself it could be to a friendly right, ship yeah yeah so it's an extra focus action so that's just good with juke so he can very reliably have focus on all three of the ships plus the force on Han to just deal with the juke issues. Right. So that just saves you a point of damage across the board. It's my man. And, and, at, and at 37 points, like Jake doesn't have to be good. He has to be okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. like that, whatever. That's, that's like, uh, that's like a really fast AP five out there at that point then. Yeah. Or, or like, uh, it's closer to like, it's closer to tally, right? She's roughly like 36, 37 points. Mm-hmm. Like Jake doesn't have quite the gun, the time on target that Tally does with the, with the, um, rear arc, mm-hmm. but he's just kind of that gnat that you don't want to turn all your ships on to kill because you can, but then you're going to give your back to Han and Nora. So he's just a two dice gun. That's going to keep just shooting at you. And, you know, sometimes like if he makes the positional call, right, have, you know, target lock focus range one. Yep. So. Yeah, we had him on another game, and uh, like you said, with Zach Bart, and he, you saw Jake just get obliterated. He was just, he was just gone, gone in the One opening shot turn. By approach on torpedo. Yep. Uh, but in your game, he actually, he 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 was actually get to he actually got to play with Jake yeah. a well, little bit, and of. it was, I mean, kind of, but compared to the game with Zach. Yeah. It actually got to do well, do some work. It got to try. <laughs> I felt like I did a – so I even – I talked to his dad about this afterwards too because he was concerned that he didn't bring Jake in aggressively enough. And uh, I I felt like I played that game uh, cagey enough to where he couldn't just bring Jake in because the right. one time he did was the time I turned on him and took his shields. And then he had to just run hard because uh, he – I mean an A-wing can't take two juke – phantom fire right like the, right he's just going to evaporate right because i think maybe against a, a less experienced player if you go oh i'm going to ignore this a wing that a wing essentially when he is able to move after the quad phantoms gets to be a quote-unquote ace right just barrel barrel, oh, yeah. barrel, yep. barrel roll boosting wherever it wants getting range one shots over and over again and that will wear on you even though it's just two dice uh, over time yeah, well, and that's the other thing that it's it's actually uh, so 
with phantoms you don't want to give up your evade token right because you Mm -hmm. you want to be able to cloak every turn you want to be able to keep that so you get into these situations where these two dice attacks are either causing you to spend tokens or leech a shield right and each one of those shields is super precious so he he's actually very efficient in that regard if you don't keep him honest and i felt like i did a pretty good job of keeping him honest so my my question in that list would be nora i don't know what you put in there instead of nora Mm-hmm. But um, I would look at Nora. I think Jake at thirty-seven is fine. Well, right, right, Nora. Her her role in the list is I'm a three dice gun that yeah. that takes dam that doesn't take damage as fast as you might think. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> man, man, if she's up. range one two of a uh, of, of four phantoms looking at her, boy, does she not appreciate that? <laughs> Very true. Go ahead, Will. Uh, she's a Leia carrier. That's her job. Yeah, she yep. is. She has two arcs and carries Leia, and has a defensive ability. Uh, no one else uh, can do that for the most. Uh, not so, to those extremes. Anyways. Yeah, and I and I think that's also another meta call because the other obvious choice, right, is Sabine, but she's in at three, and so that's going to struggle against Quad Phantom. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really good list. I think I think it's a very Nathan list as well, because uh, it it leverages very careful and patient play, and and having the these precise maneuvers down that he knows is going to fit, knows gonna, it's going to it's it's going to get there. So that's that's just a list that he is going to be able to leverage really well, much like a lot of the Corrin lists that he used to play back in Wave One, right? Mm-hmm. I also, I don't know is this the case because man, that that Han can just do it at once. But it feels like a list that if someone else sets down across from me with that net list that's not Nathan, I'm just gonna be like, oh okay, this is fine. But when Nathan has that list, then you're like, oh oh wait a minute, this is gonna be a tough fight. That makes sense. You gotta have uh, those high skill ceilings if you're gonna get to the final table. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's keep it moving though. Uh, I'm actually gonna bounce this one to. Uh, Justin, uh, this is Matt's list. He's got uh, Juke Rexler, Juke Whisper, and an uh, OGP Lambda with the Emperor Palpatine. Is this 2017? What is Matt thinking? Uh, I think Matt's wanting to make Palp work. <laughs> um, that's, I guess, my take on it. I mean, but Rexler's a beast. Whisper's still really good. Um, but I guess my question is, is is Palp good enough to hang, or is it just the other two that are really pushing up that, that skill level and pushing, a, or I guess, holding him up? I, mean, I faced a list basically like this in the final round that actually had, again, that was the Merrick with... Uh, um, composure and afterburners that could hit really hard with a, a focus target lock on that first shot. Um, I guess my question is: Is Palp good enough to replace that uh, replace that Merrick for the damage? I know he's there for support, but I guess that's where my head is. Well, you use uh, because Palp only works on defense. I say that because I'm not. He only heard. changed focuses, so he's not nearly as strong. He still has infinite range. Um, he still has. He still a shuttle, so he still has two arcs. Um, I'm curious if how he was using him if he was reinforcing with Pup just to keep him alive longer and suck up shots. Because I mean, to the Phoenix system open, I did take a Kagi with a force point on it and was basically just reinforcing and saying, I dare you to shoot at me because it's going to take a long time to kill me while my other two ships are just whittling away at you. So if, if that's the approach he was taking and if sh- people were actually focusing on the OGP, then, then I could definitely see it being a, a really good distraction that takes a long time to kill. I think that would uh, would be the go-to. I mean, if if Rexler Whisper rolls the eyeball and you got it to spend, sure, why not? Uh, but for the most part, uh, just modifying uh, the Lambda's offense or defense, if need be. So I actually know the answer to that question. Uh, he was basically using the Lambda to feed Rexler the entire time. So he was coordinating focuses or target locks to Rexler and then letting Rexler go off. And then it was just extra offense or defense for the two ships. Like the Lambda was just kind of sitting back so, and not doing anything. So pure support. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Rexler's really good, especially if you got 
five actions or whatever. Yeah, right? Yeah, you just <laughs> add extra actions to them. <laughs> it's kind of like when is wrestler or whisper struggle, right? It's when suddenly they get overwhelmed by shots. But if you have focus, evade, target lock, force on your defender, that's four shields. Seems good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seems good. And you're juking I mean, away their offensive yeah. pawns. Yeah, and then with that coordinate too, you don't actually have to do those three to five speed maneuvers. You can do something slow and really surprise somebody, right? And get get a coordinate to get your other action. Uh, and he was also using it as like pseudo advanced sensors for Rexler, right? Like now he can you know advance or he can coordinate boost or he can coordinate barrel roll to open up a four K that can't be blocked. Yeah, that's what I was imagining. You, you boost you boost amount before the four K. Yep. Looks good. Classic, classic archetype. Uh, still good? Question mark. Uh, I, apparently. I mean, dude, defenders are really good. Like, defenders are, they are very good. Is, uh, super good. Defender or uh, Rexler Breath is very cost effective for an Initiative Five ship like that. Uh, almost as good as Whisper. Uh, let's see. Let's. What else we got here? Um. We have a in uh, DM. We're gonna bounce it to you. There's only yep. there's only four of us, so uh, <laughs> this this is Pierre's uh, Imperial Fives: uh, Duchess Crack, Mahler Crack, Howl Crack, Scourge Crack, and Merc Steel Marksmanship FCS. So when I looked at this. I, I noticed this list because I was actually looking for swarms initially when I was looking at all the lists. So I like was searching for Howl Runner, and I was going through really quickly. And at first, I just assumed, oh, it's, it's just another Tie Swarm, uh, and then looked more carefully. I was like, wait, wait a second, what, what, what is what is going on here? I personally have not seen a list like like this that's carrying Howl Runner. Um, in it, and I questioned whether or not is he using Howl Runner because it is just Initiative Five, and Initiative Five is good, uh, or is he keeping it in in type of some type of formation? Uh, assuming that he is, of course, getting the having the reroll available seems really really good. Um, and Merrick Steel, um, his ability that's in the tie advance, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, that's a tie advanced, right? It's just. It's it's good. You have uh, a lot of offensive output here, and Duchess is a is a pseudo uh, advanced sensor or or not ace, uh, as long as you're not uh you know serving her up into weird spots. And uh, he was able to get five wins and uh, get into that top cut. Seems good. I mean, I I have very little information on this list because I know I'm not even sure how I would fly something like this. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you could flank with, uh, like, Duchess goes left, Merrick goes right, and you send the three ties up the middle. You could keep them together, try to get Paul run into as many people as possible. Uh, this this is just another list that just, uh, to me, screams, I'm trying to hard counter phantoms. Uh, with the crack shot and all the bullseye abilities, you could just shoot right into that uh, block of four of them. Uh, you're all five, which is pretty good. Uh, try to strip up some evades so that they don't have juke on defense. It's pretty hard to uh, trigger bullseye abilities with uh, stock TIE fighters against phantoms like that. Like Merrick can, obviously, but just because like, I can see, oh, you're going to try to joust me. Cool, I just move to the left. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I agree. That's, that might be the only downside. Those TIE fighters are going to have to be barrel rolling a lot right. to keep shots on target. So yeah. you're just modifying what's crack shot and Howl Runner. I, well, I uh, Potentially yeah. a lot of extra dice with Mahler and Skerg, yeah, but sure, for sure. I think I mean, if I were playing that, I've shots though with focus Pargolock basically shooting before a phantom shoots, so that's a pretty decent chance to remove one before it fires. Yeah, you probably kill one. Um, I would probably flank with Duchess and have Merrick in the pack. Generally, with Hellrunner, you want four, mm -hmm. like that's kind of where her efficiency overcaps her 40 points, so that would, and plus just giving Merrick rerolls seems pretty good, right. Yep. So kind of yeah. the, the the ace plus quote unquote mini swarm archetype. Yeah. That would be the first place. I, I don't know how I would fly it. That's just the first place I would start with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I see it as kind of a toolbox list because you actually could fly them all in just a single formation because that just doesn't have to alien. So you actually could fit all five in a formation if 
your i mean if it matches up against what you're planning against or you could as you guys mentioned do an ace mini swarm where duchess is your ace and actually use alerons yeah seems good <laughs> All right, I think uh, Dion pulled out one last list here, uh, and this is Brad's list. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one, uh, Dion, it doesn't look like you put any upgrade. Oh, that's right. Because there uh, are none. <laughs> there are So this is, you know, <laughs> if you guys watched our uh, our live stream from... Uh, from the Iowa system open, not system open. Excuse system me, Cedar uh, hi, the Cedar Rapids <laughs> hyperspace trial. Sorry, all the all the vocab here. Um, uh, he was the winner of that list uh, of that event and was and brought the same list and was extremely successful with it again. And I know you know a lot of people have been trying like Kylo plus Quick Draw and something else, maybe a Naked Shuttle or or something else. But Brad says here's. Just no upgrades. You got uh, Kylo. You got Lieutenant Tabson and Petty Officer Thias Th Th Thynison, something like that. Um, and just is able to just use the base chassis plus their abilities to just put on uh, just t to play really well, a really aggressive game. And you you're almost overwhelmed by the by the two shuttles coming in. They have a lot of health. And all while, all, all while that's happening, you got Kylo picking you apart. And uh, it's just like looking at it at first, I was like, man, this seems like a really weird list. But getting to see him play it a couple times, you realize this is actually really good and kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, Brad, Brad flies this. He, uh, he hits all the major things. He has, he's got de multiple deployment strategies. He's got uh, strategies for each matchup, each kind of archetype. And this, uh, the Thanos is super weird. Nobody, I've never seen anybody put Thanos in on the board. Yeah. Uh, and it has a really interesting synergy with Kylo. Mm -hmm. Because if you get, if you take a stress inside of Petty Officer Thanison's arc at zero to two, uh, she can give you a tractor beam. Kylo can give people panicked pilots. So if that, uh, if you shoot Kylo, get the panicked pilot dark side card. Then Petty Officer Thanison shoots you, puts a crit through. Now you're double stressed and have a tractor token or triple stressed. You're a sad person. <laughs> oh, that's real sad. Oh, that's real sad. I'd be curious to know how often he actually got that combo off. Because from... It's probably more of a deterrent than anything else you know yeah from my experience with kylo without hate i rarely used his ability because i prefer to actually mod my dice yeah 100 percent. force hate. is definitely a passive or i mean it's definitely a, a limited resource without hate with hate i definitely use his ability much more often uh from my from what i saw uh brad uh was normally focusing if he was like uh, in the mix of things and would only target lock if he knew he wasn't getting shot at. Uh, so trying to conserve that force as much as possible. Um, like, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird trick, but uh, it does still have that, that synergy. You're also getting, I mean, uh, you have two coordinators so you can coordinate each other. Um, very interesting. I do want to give a big shout out to Brad. Uh, this top 16, uh, does not do, uh, Brad justice. Um, he had won his invite mm -hmm. last weekend out in Iowa. Yep. And, uh, Brad, Brad, uh, I love the guy, uh, but he does give off this like villainous vibe. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, he just he just has a weird vibe. Uh, not weird, but um, he's got he's just he's, he's just serious. He's ser he's competitive and serious. That's all. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. No, no. If you if you actually met him and talked to him, you, you knew. Yeah, that. you realize he's a cool he's, guy. Yeah, yeah. Very, uh, we all love Brad, but normally super competitive. Uh, goes all out all the time to get the win um, legally within the rules, um, right? 
And he uncharismatically uh, conceded his top 16 game to Brandon so yep. that Brandon could go to Worlds. And uh, he also did it to another Gold Squadron member, Darwin, mm -hmm. in the last round of the hyperspace qualifier as well. Uh, yep. I think he, I think he was like way up on Darwin. Super, he, early, he was, and then, <laughs> then just flew his ships off the board. Um, and like I said, uh, so a huge shout out to Brad. Uh, it, it's very hard to make those decisions of, um, especially when you're a competitive person like that. So, uh, from, from me and the rest of the gold squadron, huge, huge shout out to Brad, uh, getting our members into that. Uh, exclusive Worlds tournament. Yep, yep, yep. Could have been me, though. Could have been <laughs> me, though, Brad. Could have been nice. Oh. He had to get his first, though, Will. He had to get I his... Know. You were in yes. his way. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, I let him win in Iowa. Right. Obviously, obviously, I let him win that. Right. And then... <laughs> So it all worked out, except for me. I'm still looking for my invite someday. See, man, it was a rough day for Wills. Uh, his Will Barnacle went 5-0 in the hyperspace as well and lost in the final round. Yeah. In, in like it a, sucks, man. In, a, in like a chest clencher, was way up and then had a string of dice that just saw him behind and not knowing what to do. Yeah, this was uh, the first year I played in the qualifier because I had right. never gone, <laughs> I had never gone to an open that I wasn't in the final table. Yeah, I was too busy uh, winning, winning system yeah. opens over here. <laughs> uh, but oh man, that's that's the worst thing. At least, uh, like, uh, at least in the open for me, I got my second lost round three. So I was like, let's have fun. Like, don't care, doesn't matter, right? But Saturday. It was super pressure all day, the whole day. Can't lose at all. And I finally lose the last round. And it was heartbreaking. It was, it was a pretty frustrating match. But, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. Yep. And I, I want to address something in the chat because there is confusion here. We're specifically, we're talking about Worlds invites for the hyperspace qualifier, not a hyperspace trial. So somebody said, don't you realize the, the world invite goes to the next person? Yes, it does during a trial. During the qualifier at a system open, you have to go 6-0. and but You have to go undefeated in order to get the world's invite. So even if somebody goes 6-0 and and uh, beat somebody who didn't have an invite and they already have one, that's basically a quote-unquote wasted world's invite it doesn't go to anybody yep to just yeah, same to clear that same up. thing with the top eight uh because yeah. there's eight people who lost that round it right. can't just go to one of them randomly can't go to the best one of mov right uh because no one was caring about mov did you guys you, you two guys did well with your phantoms did you care about mov the whole time is that like well no but they kept asking for it because the tournament software requires mov to be put in and i'm just like <laughs> uh, i i killed 200 he killed like 76 i think yeah. like sure 76 whatever yeah no i i that's one of the things that i do like about the opens is that mov really doesn't matter it only matters for wins so yeah well so it's weird because like with quad phantom you care about mov in the game like that's that's one of your win conditions is kind of like tracking to make sure they have to fight you so like oh, sure. i was always i was always aware of it but there was never a point where i was like flying a ship away that it wasn't just that game right mm -hmm. so i don't know that that makes 100 100 percent sense all right so we're going to move into our list of the week list of the week was Submitted by David Brennan, and it is a um, Grand Republic list. A lot of people have been talking about the Grand Republic and saying, "Man, these guys look bad." So let's let's look at one of these uh, one of these lists. He's actually pretty pumped about it. We're gonna go ahead and bring it up on screen for you guys right now. And uh, David says the following: I just accidentally minimized the window, stalling. Here it is. <laughs> so he says, um, for my list, I always take one of each obstacle. I take Luminara, 
to keep the clones alive. Use her force ability only for that. Use the Ark and Lumi to pick up locks, hoping to use the strain from Cody to pass to a clone. And then you trigger clusters at the best target. Remember, you got four locks out there um, because two from Luminara and two from the Ark. So you should be able to pick a juicy target. The list itself has three V19 Torrent Gold Squadron Troopers. Those are the Initiative 2 Torrents. Both, all three of them, excuse me, have cluster missiles and synchronized council. Then you have an ARC-170 Starfighter, the lowest initiative one, also initiative two, the uh, 104th Battalion Pilot with Commander Cody, R3 Astromech, and also synchronized council. And you round the list out with Luminara in the Delta-7 with another R3 Astromech, and again, synchronized council. So five ships with synchronized councils and... Um, Let's go ahead and what, what do we think here, Will? I mean, it's a lot of target lock synergy. Um, the synchronized council, so if you don't spend the lock, you can give it to a friendly ship of range one or range three if they have synchronized council. So these guys can be giving each other's uh, locks uh, all the time, as long as they're not being used. I really like the synergy of the R3 Astromech and Synchronized Counseled, uh, where you can get two locks, you can s spend one, and then give the lock to another person. Uh, the, the only problem is that, in my experience, it, it seems to prevent focus fires often, mm -hmm. except for if you're shooting twice which is yeah. where those cluster <laughs> missiles come in. Uh, so you can throw a lock to somebody, and then they could shoot basically the same two people that the Ark and uh, Luminara was shooting at as well. Uh, it still has five points. Uh, you're a bunch of Initiative 2s, which are the super budget options, like the Gold Squadron Trooper and the 104th Battalion are like budget budget options um they're only 25 and 42 points respectively mm -hmm. that's so cheap for those chassis uh i'm just worried about overall acquiring those locks uh you only have one initiative for everybody else's initiative too so you're going to be coming in pretty hot trying to get those locks uh the gold squadron's got four forward and the arc's got three and three bank, but it's a medium base, so. so and, and the cluster um, missiles are range one to two, right? So they, they mm -hmm. want, wants to be in your face. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know what I would do to change this, though. I mean, he's not ask, he's not necessarily asking for for changes. I guess he just wants to know, like, what what do we, what do we think? <laughs> <laughs> Man, what do you think? I, I'm. I mean, it, it seems it, it seems should, uh, it should work. <laughs> it's like, it for me sense. personally. It seems like one of the best uses of the torrent I've seen. Because that's one thing I've been struggling with. Like, how can I use this ship in a list and actually make it feel effective? Make it make it feel like it's doing some work. And. Um, I mean, having that target lock synergy, having it out there, being able to shoot multiple missiles with multiple of them, that seems seems good. Seems like it could be scary. What, Tyler, Justin, what do you guys think? I uh, I think missile turrets blow up before they get to do anything in a game. <laughs> okay. And uh, I see a I see an Aether Sprite without uh, without either configuration, so I can just ignore it. Like, I the arc the 104th Battalion Arc is a great ship, and that's a pretty decent loadout on there. But outside of that, I'm not overly worried. Like, I probably kill two of those torrents before they shoot with phantoms. What about in hyperspace? Yeah, I assume we're playing hyperspace now. <laughs> uh, then, uh, so I have a very good hyperspace list that I was planning on playing at Adepticon and getting reps with, and then I just kept wetting so I didn't get a chance to use it at all. Okay. Uh, which is uh, Sense Vader with Afterburners, Three Academies, and Crackshot Fell. And okay. I'm pretty sure I still kill one of those torrents and block the others from getting actions. So, so actually, I heard of. I think it was Johannes was running a yeah, very he was similar running, list. He, he was running that exact list. I got him on it the night before. <laughs> and he actually lost to a, a similar Republic list. Yeah, I heard there was some dice involved in it, but basically it was just 
uh, a Republic swarm. Yeah. So hmm. I think this could do work, but uh, I guess I, I'm kind of the same way. I don't know if I'm sold on uh, the cluster missiles on Synchronized yeah. Council because if you want to actually pass that uh, that target lock, you can't spend it. So then you're right. just throwing natty dice and brain. Right. So like effectively the arc. Like, yeah, so all of those guys are just shooting uh, two. Sh they're double tapping with a single focus token between the two of them. Mm -hmm. like, okay, I guess. You know, I'm like, I'm not overly worried about that. Yeah, it's a lot of attacks, but it's not a lot of modified attacks. It's kind of the same same issue that uh, the five ion cannon Y wings come into, where it's like it, sh it throws nine attacks around, but those aren't modded attacks. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where it falls short. I mean, and I think I'm, you could have yeah. some really good days with this if your variance is hot. But you can oh, yeah. Have some really bad days with it. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm not sold on the torrents at all. Arcs, yeah, man, sign me up. If I played Republic, I would be playing multiple Arc 170s. Good ships, cheap prices. All right. Yeah, I think I'm in, I'm thinking I'm about on the same boat. I have yet to put a, a torrent on the board that wasn't a naked gold. At 25 points, I was like, hey, that's a good deal. But I, 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 I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, for, uh, I just look at it as a Z that has an extra health for one point. That's fair. Oh, that dial's garbage compared to the Zs, though. Well, Zs don't got talent rolls. I, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, thank you so much to David for submitting the list. I think it's a really interesting one. Uh, I know that even with the limited amount of ships, it's cool to see something a little different than I have I've seen out there uh, being theorized for the Republic. And uh, we'll see what comes out, you know, here in the future. Um, so the, did, you, did you look at the uh, Australians uh, trial that came up with their Jedi lists? I, I have I have not. Oh, uh, yeah, Jedi were all over that thing. You know, I shocking, right? You take all the best yeah. Imperial Ace players and you give them Anakin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so it was most. It was basically Anakin and Ahsoka because Ahsoka can double action as well, or triple action if she needs to. Right. The super two, coordinate. Two yeah, then two torrent blockers. Yeah, uh, yeah. I played it with. I played it against Marcel last night, and it was doing. It was doing pretty good. Yeah. Turns out, uh, four tech dice double modded. Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> yep. All righty. We're going to close out here with our question of the week. So the question comes from Maka uh, on our Discord channel. So if you haven't joined our Discord, feel free to jump in there. Uh, anybody can submit questions for question of the week. Question is, now that the Separatists and Republic are legal, it, it, it'll, shade, it'll shake up the meta. But should FFG worry about Extended being dominated by Quad Phantoms and Rebel Beef? It is just a. Is it just a case of good lists flown by strong pilots, or are they "quote unquote" overpowered? And should something be done to address them in the next points update? So personally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Tyler. <laughs> yes, yeah. So um, you know, FFG try to lightly address the quad phantoms. They're like, hey, look, you can't fit four four jukes in it and basically the community came back and said it's still very good now what what will they do will they make it so that you can't fit four sigmas at all together or maybe make it so that juke is more expensive you know tyler you were saying earlier that maybe juke is the problem more than the phantom chassis yeah i would uh, I, you know, I, I told wade so if this happens it was totally my idea and wade made it happen right uh i would really like to see juke priced based on the number of jukes in the list it's exponentially better the more you add hmm. so if you priced juke at something like three six and nine like one juke is okay right it's it's a it's a nice upgrade for someone like whisper it's but it's not oppressive in any way right mm -hmm. two jukes you get close to there but it's the, at nine points for the two of them you're still saving a point for something else but no one's going to take three jukes anymore you're not going to spend 18 points on jukes Right. But the other thing to think about is it's not just juke, it's juke on a chassis that gets in evade for free. So yeah. juke on phantoms that right. are always going to be focus evaded, mm -hmm. that can start to be a problem. 
And if you could actually fit multiple Juke and Defenders in a list, that could be a problem too. But unfortunately, they're too expensive, so you can't. Uh, don't, don't say unfortunately. Don't say unfortunately. No, don't say that now. <laughs> yeah. We also have the, uh, the Naboo Starfighter coming in next wave, right? That's also going to be a great Juke platform. Oh, yeah. yeah so, that has two attack dice, though. Sure. But if you effectively have crack shot, I guarantee you your Y wings don't see the difference between you know <laughs> four three yeah. attack dice ships and six two attack dice ships, right? Like, oh god, uh, six, right? six, <laughs> six six jukes would be real bad. I'm yeah. so excited um, for the Naboo Starfighter. Uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm about in I'm about in the same position on that. Is that I think if you have Stigmaray or full throttle. You just need to double the price of Juke. Like, there's right. no way. There's, so that, there's no way that it should be priced the same as, like, Juke on a Seek. Or, sure, but, but you don't, like, I mean, from a like a competitive pricing standpoint, you don't care about those, right? Like, you want to you want to care about the upgrade where it's going to get played, right? So price it accordingly there and don't worry about the random one-off guy that's like yeah but my juke x-wing list where i passed it and evade through this complicated room goldberg machine like we don't <laughs> care. like doesn't matter man well i tyler I actually really like your your solution there of making it uh making it a scale some a different yeah. type of variable points cost i really like that right and, we, and we've seen that variable point cost in a couple of other ways so like here's another one like you know keep going keep going down that road I think yep. that's the right answer. And like I think not it, necessarily that answer, but like you exploring more variable point costs. Yeah, it, it it opens up design space as well for them, right? Yeah. Like I, yeah. I I think that's really cool. All right, well I want to thank Justin and Tyler for joining us. You guys are awesome. Do you have any um, any shout outs you want to make before we kind of get into the close here? Uh, shout out to Hank uh, from Adepticon. He's the uh, the guy that puts it all on. I don't know if he'll watch this or not, or if anybody knows Hank. He's an awesome dude. Uh, he's in Peoria a lot, so I've known him for years. Um, and Adepticon is just an awesome tournament. If you've never got to come to it, it's a lot of fun. Like definitely make it a uh, a reason to come. You know, visit Dion and I in the in the great city of Chicago, mm-hmm. um, or Schaumburg, if you will. You don't get to actually yeah. go into Chicago. Sh- Chicago area right don't worry about it yeah yeah. (laughs) um but just everybody that that got to come in like that's the actual you know the air quote best part of x-wing right is Mm -hmm. you get you know all all the buddies show up and you get to just have a good time and you play games and everyone's happy for each other and then you go out and get pizza or you know do whatever afterwards and yeah just have an enjoyable experience justin I would say I just want to shout out all my opponents. I had a lot of great games and had a lot of great opponents that I played against. So that was definitely appreciated. And maybe I'll just get on a soapbox here for one minute that I haven't had a chance to mention this before, but actually had a couple scenarios come up in some of my games where um, if I wasn't watching my opponent closely, then I'll say bad things would have happened to me. So Mm -hmm. I'll say, when you're playing a competitive game, make sure you're watching your opponent and what they're doing and, and make sure everything is kosher. Uh, if you see something not kosher, point it out. Try to be as nice as you can, but it's better to point it out and uh, not get wrecked by it later than to, to let it slide and, of course, get wrecked by it. <laughs> um, so that's my soapbox. Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> I'm not going to name any for anything like that. But, uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, I think to extend on that too, um, and I know I've talked about this on Scum and Villainy a couple of times, but if you're at a big event like this, never be scared to call a judge. Like, it's not a bad thing. Like, no one's going to look down on you for being like, hey, I don't think this rule is being played right. Even if you're wrong, like, you mm-hmm. can be wrong. That's okay. But, you know, make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Right. That's right. A, the judge's job. There is to make sure that the game is being played correctly and to answer your questions. Don't don't ever be afraid to call a judge ever. Yeah. And if your opponent, let me tell you this: if your opponent ever tells you, "Don't worry about calling the judge," you call the judge immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Super call the judge. Yeah. As soon as the, as soon as your opponent says no, trust me. <laughs> you go. Uh, unless that's a friend. Like someone you 100% have confidence in. 
Uh, you 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 call the judge, and even sometimes, yep. even then, <laughs> you go. And also in the same space, don't be afraid to ask for the marshal, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I had I had a, a spot in a in in my like super tight round three game that would have knocked me out of the whole whole event, um, where my opponent K turned Vader and wanted to trigger afterburners and then use Vader's ability to take extra actions, right? Mm-hmm. And like I I I a hundred percent understand why he thought he could, right? Like because it's. Right. A lot of people don't understand that the fully executed maneuver includes checking for stress. Right. Right. Just that does it's not um, like a linear thought process to get to that. Right. Like you have mm-hmm. to go look at the and I was like, I'm and so I'm standing there and he's like, OK, so I afterburners. I'm like, OK, I know what he wants to do. And he's like, I spend a force. And I was like, OK, what action would you like to take? And he was like, oh, I'm going to target lock. And I was like, what card do you have that lets you target lock while stressed? He's right. like, I don't have a stress yet. And I was like. You do, but yes, you I'm do. Like, uh, so he's like, I was like, let's call a judge. It's fine. And then the judge was like, oh no, I think the uh, the stress comes later. And I was like, can we please call the marshal or pull up the rule segment? But yeah. I know I'm right here, but yeah, it's 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 a very easy thing to mix up, right? Oh, yeah. Like it's not a malicious thing in any way, but yeah. So if you're like, hey, I don't, not that I don't like the ruling, but I still think that this isn't correct, you know, call the marshal. And mm-hmm. then at that point good or wrong yes or or no if the marshal is like hey this is the way it's like that's the way it's ruled like that's just live with it go on about your day and you know figure it out later after the tournament or in between rounds or whatnot if you can you know have more time to look it up absolutely now will let's have a chat will <laughs> what? 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 No. What? What? what did you do? I, what's what I didn't do? It's let's oh. we, we had a we had a conversation um on our last episode 1 102 just 7 days ago where you know I you know of course I wanted you to win the system open just to just to win it but you said that if you didn't win the system open you would quit smoking. How are things going, my friend? Well, I w- I will be honest with you. All right. Uh, I, <laughs> oh, this is this is this is this is confessional <laughs> confessional. Save your judgment till I'm done for just one second. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say uh, I I did finish up uh, the cigarettes that I had on me. Right. But. Uh, that, uh, I ran out, um, before the finals, uh, when, uh, Tyler and Nathan were playing. So since, uh, I was at that point, uh, no longer, um, the Adepticon system open champion, uh, is now Tyler Tippett. Uh, I have not smoked a single cigarette. Mommy. Uh, I had to use, it was, uh. It is hard going to a gas station. My mind's still on it. Oh, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. But I uh, do want to give a big shout out to a lot of people who reached out to me uh, about it. It's uh, something I've been trying for a while, but um, putting it onto a public platform like our podcast really, uh, what do I want to say? put the pressure on me yeah right yeah um it's not just like like oh well i don't need to do that you know what i mean kind of thing or like uh but i was actually uh reached out to by a couple of our listeners um with a, a lot of words of encouragement and it's uh actually been really helpful so i appreciate everybody um taking their time to check in with me and given uh given some of that advice and some personal testimonies about uh when they were trying to quit or uh have tried to quit in the past so uh, i do li- i do live with two roommates who smoke um and my girlfriend was a smoker but she's supposed to stop now too so um i'll still be tempted but uh with uh, hopefully with the community helping me out, um, I can press on. Uh, was, from what I heard, it was, the first month is the hardest, so we'll get to it together. Oh well, um, as we close, look, Will, I'm you know I got your back, man. Like you know you know every, everybody has their things they struggle with, and 
you know what I, I don't know what I can do, but you know I got your back, man. Uh, but, uh, I, I just feel that I'm gonna I'm I'm trading cigarettes for food, so I'm gonna gain <laughs> weight for a little bit. <laughs> well, I um. Before we close out here, I do need to address a couple things here. We want to say thank you for the donos from uh, Sken Mitro. He said, uh, love your work, guys. And uh, also Isofan for his donation. He just he said, Will, keep it up. I'm working on it. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Make sure if you haven't followed us on Twitch, go ahead and do that there. That's where we do the majority of our streaming work where we do giveaways and all kinds of stuff. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, we're trying to get to 7,000 subscribers. We upload all of our games from our uh, recordings. We got league night we got painting tutorials we got all kinds of things on there we have our new series this week in x-wing which i want to address due to our content release schedule i released an episode of this week in x-wing on april fool's day i realized that that probably wasn't the best choice because people thought i was lying in the video they thought i was trolling them but it was true all of it everything in that video is true guys so, if you haven't watched that series, uh, it's an awesome series, as well as our X-Wing Quick Tips. People have been asking, Dion, where's my Quick Tips? They're coming. <laughs> They're coming, guys. I'm working on a, a, a schedule for myself to figure out when I can record everything, because out of everything, I will tell you, out of all the video series I've done, Quick Tips is the one that takes the most amount of time to do. So... I'm trying to find a good spot to actually fit it, along with, you know, family time and all the other content that we take care of. Lastly, if you haven't joined our Discord, go ahead and do that. If you're watching live, go type exclamation point Discord in either YouTube or in Twitch, and a link to our Discord chat will be in there. And if you're a patron, you actually can link your patron Patreon to Discord to get your special role. And if you want to support us and join the largest group of supporters we have, you can go to patreon.com slash gold squadron to get awesome swag and join the team. Thank you so much to everybody who watched, who's listening, and gentlemen, for joining me. My name's Dio Morales. Gold Squadron out. <laughs>